In college, Dave Schmelzer had a strong belief about God, that there wasn't one, and he went out of his way to confront those who disagreed with him. I would kind of seek out people who were churchgoers, and I would ask them why. I would ask them with an edge. I would not ask them why neutrally and in a friendly way. It would have an edge of like, why do you do this? Dave didn't start out as an atheist. In fact, when he was a child, he went to church with his family. The church was boring. He says the preacher spoke in jargon he didn't understand. Sundays was one of the worst parts of our week. Uh, it really was one of the days I'd look forward to the least. By the time he turned 10, the family stopped going. And over the course of his teenage years, Dave searched for meaning in his life. Religion, he says, didn't give him any answers. I think a godless world made the most sense to me, and I think I was looking for um, a sense that the actual experience of living meant something beyond just find a good job, find a good spouse, raise a nice family, and then die. In his first year of college, he earned a reputation as one of the most outspoken atheists on campus. But his grades were falling, he had no friends, and he began to question his purpose in life. What if I'm a mediocre or less student at a good school? Um, is the whole life over? You know, does that mean now I'm doing whatever it is I don't want to do? And and uh, I'll never find that great spouse and those great kids and I'll die poor. I mean, is that what my life means? That's when Dave began to look for answers. And I thought, back to those thoughtful Christians, what they would tell me is God is there for moments like this, that God is a guide, that God speaks, that God answers prayers, that God has a future for you that will work out. One night in his dorm room, Dave did the very thing he mocked Christians for doing. He prayed. I prayed something almost exactly this. I still remember it. God. I don't believe you exist, but on the off chance that I'm wrong, today would be an outstanding day to show me, amen. That night on a way to a movie, Dave took a wrong turn and got lost. As he studied his map, he hit a wooden post, but it wasn't just a post, it was a giant cross. Normally that wouldn't have meant anything to me, but how many other crosses have I rammed in my lifetime? <laughs> Dave's car wasn't damaged, so we continued driving. He got lost again. This time, he pulled into a parking lot to take another look at his map. As he pulled out, he noticed something strange. That's a giant floodlit cross. That's two in 10 minutes. And then I felt um, something that surprised me. I suddenly had a strong impression. Dave, you always thought that if there was a God, the good news would be that I cared about humanity, about people. I'm here to tell you that there is a God, and I care about you. I strongly felt that. And I thought, where did that come from? That's the creepiest thought. That's not something I ever would have thought myself. And, uh, and I thought, well, that's, of course, my whole argument is that all these people who say they hear from God are ridiculous. Maybe I'm one of those people. Maybe they were right. Dave didn't know what to make of this experience, so he talked to friends and took a class on religions. During his studies, he found only one place that explained what happened to him, the Bible. And then I read Acts chapter 2 with my little Bible group, and I thought, well, there it is. In Acts chapter 2, after the Holy Spirit comes, what, what's going to happen? Anybody who's trying to follow Jesus will start hearing God's voice. And so I remember saying, Jesus, I think it's about you. I'm in. Help me do that. If there's anything about sins needing to be forgiven, consider that asked. Dave learned more about Jesus by studying the Bible and praying regularly. He says one thing he learned is that God has great plans for him. My whole issue in life had been, where is my life going? Why is it going to be good? And it seems like one of Jesus' key promises is, I want to give you life. I want to do that. And I want to do it so much more than you could hope for. Since then, Dave has never looked back. He's now married with five beautiful children. He's even written a book about his life called Not the Religious Type. What all those Christians of my youth were trying to tell me is I needed a relationship with God. God has been, for me, very much a guide in live, and the keeper of promises, and an encourager, all those things have been true.